This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by RidleyReport.com slash travel Put Ridley on the road In astronomy class, they taught us that the discovery that the Earth revolves around the Sun was actually made by a philosopher, not an astronomer. Well, let me take that back. I don't remember exactly what Copernicus was, but he came to his belief uh, of the orbits because his belief was philosophically pleasing. The discovery of galaxies and what they were really was made by a philosopher, Immanuel Kant. Now, discovery is probably not exactly the right word. He was the big proponent of the idea back in the days when people thought galaxies were just another type of nebula. The thinking back in those, those old days was that the galaxy was the universe and that uh, these other galaxies thought to be spiral nebula were actually inside our galaxy. Anyhow, the salient point I'm trying to make here is that the philosophically pleasing ideas often tend to be the ones that are true. Immanuel Kant's belief in island universes, a.k.a. other galaxies, turned out to be a lot more accurate than the beliefs of people who knew a lot more than him about astronomy. Well, I'm not a philosopher or an astronomer, but I did have an idea that made me feel a lot like Immanuel Kant must have felt. So I'll go ahead and articulate it, and if it happens to be true, then maybe someday I'll end up in some physics book where I otherwise completely wouldn't belong. I have this theory, more of a hunch really, about the nature of the universe, or universes. I was watching a documentary on string theory in early 2010, I think, and another documentary on fractals roughly the same time. And I guess something in my mind just put the two together. The string theory documentary explained how atoms are made up of, or thought to be made up of, quantum particles known as strings. Rapidly vibrating or pulsing membranes of energy, if I recall. They're called brains for short. And the thing that struck me the most about their discussion of brains was just one sentence in the documentary. They mentioned that they think a brain can reach the size of a universe. There's also the theory that a collision of two brains could result in a big bang. So I guess that makes me wonder if these quantum particles inside atoms are in fact small universes. And if our universe is a brain inside an atom, inside a much larger universe. This concept, well, I don't have any real basis for it, other than a hunch, got a boost when I watched this other documentary about fractals. Basically, the concept of a fractal is that things in nature sort of repeat themselves, and the large mimics the small. One example of a fractal would be a tree, where you've got the veins of a leaf which looks a lot like the branches that are holding the leaf, in a way, which looks a lot like the limbs that are holding up the branches. As you move in closer, you see something very similar to what you would see uh, in, in the wide shot of the tree. Branching. It's sort of nature's geometry. That seems sort of consistent with, I guess, what I'll call my uh, quantum particle universe hunch. The small mimics the big. I guess, like Ptolemy and Kant, what I like about this concept is that it's understandable. That makes it philosophically pleasing. The idea of a Big Bang uh, coming from nothing, and of everything starting and ending with nothing before and nothing after, is not philosophically pleasing, because who can imagine nothing? The idea of an infinite number of universes also goes further to explaining the existence of life. Maybe it first happened in another universe where the conditions for creating life are easier. 
This universe seems to be, I think, pretty good at spreading life or providing places, large numbers of places where it could exist. But from what I understand, the universe is not friendly at all toward the creation of the first cell. Scientists seem to be completely at a loss to explain how that happened or ever could have happened. Now, maybe one of these other universes is the source of God, or maybe it's the source of just some other type of being or creature that was able to migrate throughout the universes. But I just find that, again, that concept also much easier to swallow than the idea that a cell would come from nothing in this universe. And of course, it is now a pretty mainstream idea, the idea that there are, in fact, more than one, you know, that there, there is, in fact, more than one universe. I guess where I'm pushing the edge here is where I bring up the idea of maybe uh, quantum particles being universes. Anyway, I'm kind of nobody when it comes to physics and astronomy, but uh, sometimes a people who, or sometimes a person who's not close to that sort of thing, uh, will see something that people who are close to it don't see. I sure can't see any of the trees in the astronomy forest, but I can see the forest itself. I've had too many hunches over the years that I never articulated because they were just in the back of my mind. That they turned out to be true. And I found myself wishing I'd written them down somewhere. Would you like to see the Ridley Report cover a specific event in person? Well, Ridley is a cheap bastard. His travel budget is close to zero, and he does not often go out of his way for stories. Unless you pay him. As of summer 09, he charges about 10 bucks an hour, plus driving expenses. Put Ridley on the road. RidleyReport.com slash travel.